Someone, anyone need more time? No one needs more time. OK, so hopefully uh, you should have gotten uh, a plot looking something like this. And um, so, uh, yeah, so what, what people tend to do a lot in practice is that since we don't really trust any of the methods, uh, we don't really know which one of the methods, the different differential expression uh, methods, uh, is the best one. And, and this, of course, also works for sort of a pseudo time or clustering and so on and so forth is that you can it's, it's often a good idea to run several of them and, and try to uh, you combine them somehow and use the overlap to, to, to find the sort of the stuff that you're most confident in. So in, with, um, the, uh, with differential expression that, that works pretty well because effectively what, what we want to do is to uh, draw a big Venn diagram as we've done here. So Again, uh, each, uh, so, uh, each circle here corresponds to a different method. And uh, the numbers in the, different inter uh, in the various intersections here uh, tell us uh, how, uh, how many of, the, uh, of them that were found uh, uh, in, in, the relative, uh, in, the, in the relative sets, right? So, so what we can see here, for example, is that we have two genes here that were missed by all of these three methods because they're only in the in the ground truth. Uh, so there is, um, uh, for example, there are six genes that were find, found by DEC2 and the KS test and that were uh, uh, true positives and so on and so forth. So, so this gives you, um, and what you can see here, for again, for example, is that the DEC2 uh, found a lot of uh, uh, false positives. So a lot of genes that none of the other methods, including the gr ground truth, uh, found. Yeah, so I think DEC2 does multiple testing correction in the results that it outputs, right? Whereas the other methods don't. Uh, so that's why we, have, we don't modify DEC2 because those p-values are already uh, recalculated uh, or, or adjusted for, uh, for multiple testing, whereas the other methods are not. Yes. Okay. So, no. Okay. No, that that's correct. So we're using different uh, different adjusting adjustment. Yeah. So that's we we, sh we should probably address that to make sure that we, we correct them in the same in the same manner. Yeah. So. Uh, Uh, I think that we don't know the answer to that question. Uh, we, we've noticed that DSeq2 and other methods that were developed for bulk RNA-seq tend to uh, call a very large number of genes as differentially expressed. So you, you can, they can, for example, report half of your genes as differentially expressed, which doesn't really seem sort of biologically sensible, uh, but again, without ground truth, it, it's we don't we don't really know for sure. Um. <coughs> okay. Yes. So yeah. So there are simulation packages for RNA seq data, but uh, there are not any of, the, that, of them that I'm aware of, uh, and and again, it's because we don't really have a good handle on the noise structure uh, of, of the single cell experiment. And one of the reasons why we don't have that is because uh, the, that is probably a function of the protocol. And uh, uh, there are sort of several protocols out there, uh, competing protocols out there. So you'd have to tune it to each specific protocol in, if, if you wanted to have really good performance. 
Okay, so uh, we are going to uh, proceed uh, to the next, um, uh, no, we're not at the next section, section just yet, just yet. So uh, we have a, a, a sort of a variant uh, of the previous exercise where we instead uh, of changing the sort of parameters uh, randomly, we just change the um, dispersion parameter so that we, uh, so what happens is that we effectively are only changing uh, the variance, but whereas the mean is kept the same. And um, uh, what, what we predict is, is, ha is going to happen in this scenario is that the uh, uh, traditional DE-seq methods uh, will have a very hard time because they are designed to find changes in, uh, detect fold changes. And now we have no detect, no change in the, uh, in, in the f uh, no fold change, uh, but we, the only change happens in the variance, so in the spread of the distribution, which by, depending on how you like to define differentially expressed, at least, in, in, at least by some definitions, it's very reasonable to, s to think that if a gene changes from being uh, having very low variance to having very, having very high variance, that should be constituted a differentially expressed gene, even though the uh, mean expression level is the same. So, uh, yeah, so we have an exercise on that bit. Uh, I think I will proceed to looking at some real data instead, and then we can return to that bit. Uh, later on uh, when, when you have your, your own, uh, when, when you're more, more working uh, independently and not, not as a group. So in this last bit, we're going to look at uh, differential expression, but we're gonna use a real data set. So uh, we're gonna return to this uh, Deng data set that, was, that we looked at previously for the, today for the uh, pseudo time analysis. And what we're going to do, uh, again, to reduce the size of the problem uh, so that it doesn't take so long, such a long time to run, is that we're only going to select uh, 12 cells from two of the stages, so the uh, two-cell stage and the 16-cell stage, and then we're going to compare them. So uh, that's what, what this code here does. And uh, what we can do then is that we can plot a, a heat map uh, where you can see that uh, Looking only at the um, uh, expression uh, for each gene of these these two groups uh, is actually quite easy uh, to tell just by eye that th these are clearly two distinct uh, groups of cells. So, uh, so and what this means is that we can actually trust the clustering very well here. So there is no question about whether or not there is any any heterogeneity present uh, in in, the, in these uh, two samples. So uh, what we're going to do, again, to sort of uh, speed things up is that uh, instead of looking at all of the cell, uh, all of the genes, uh, we're going to look only at 1,000 genes. And we're going to try to run uh, the uh, KS test, uh, DEC2 and SCD as before. So we have those, those commands here. And uh, we can then uh, compare. Uh, the um, uh, output of these three different um, uh, methods uh, using a Venn diagram. So unlike the previous Venn diagram that I showed, uh, we obviously don't know what the ground truth is here, so we only have three circles. And uh, what you can see here is that out of these thousand genes that we looked at, we see that <coughs> DEC identifies by far the highest number of differentially expressed genes. So as I said, it finds uh, more than half of the genes it thinks are differentially expressed between these two conditions, uh, whereas uh, the KS test and the SCDE actually seems to be in relatively good agreement here. Uh, and they identify a sort of what I would uh, say is a much more reasonable number of differentially expressed genes. Yeah, I, I would say these hundred. Uh, again, it it really depends on on what your what your study is about. If you want to find the sort of 
the most high confidence differentially expressed genes, then I would use only those 139. If you, want, if you want to say that, I want to include everything that anyone ever thought could be differentially expressed, then you, you would sort of choose a larger set. So uh, finally, uh, what is uh, very useful to, again, when we're trying to, to analyze uh, what these different differential expression methods uh, are, are picking up on uh, is to uh, try to plot the, uh, the data uh, from the, from essentially it's the data from this, uh, these heat map, this heat map up here, uh, uh, this, this heat map in, in various ways. So one quantity uh, which is of interest is, uh, for example, to look at the, um, uh, the mean, the full change of, the, uh, of each of the genes that were, that were being identified. So here we're looking at the full, full change between the two cell stage and the, and the 16 cell stage. And so, so for each gene, uh, we can calculate the average uh, between the, uh, for, for each condition and then we, we can simply take the ratio of them and, and then, of course, the log 2. So what you would expect is that the method will be sort of picking up mainly genes that are sort of high negative or high positive values and not so many that are close to zero. Um, and uh, this, this indeed seems to be the case here. Uh, so this was for the, uh, for the Kolmogorov-Smirnov test. Uh, if we look at DEC, you can imme immediately see that you have a lot more genes that are, have low fold changes that are being picked up. Uh, another type of uh, plot, uh, which is, uh, can also be informative, is what's known as a volcano plot, which, again, uh, is very standard in the, um, uh, uh, for the bulk RNA-seq data. So what you plot here is, again, you have the... Uh, the change in the, the log fold change in mean expression uh, versus the p-value. So what we're looking for here are sort of things that are high up into the corners here. So the negative uh, log p-value uh, basically tells you about significance, and the uh, x-axis here with the uh, log fold change tells you about magnitude of effect. So, so we're looking for things that are sort of high magnitude and highly significant. And in this case, we've colored sort of everything that ha are above uh, the 0.05 um, p-value threshold in, in red. And then we also require them to be, uh, uh, no, it's just by construction, it doesn't report anything which is uh, in, in the middle there. So, uh, uh, so you're, you're really looking for this type of pattern, and it, it's important to plot the, the, the data in this way. And because if, if it turns out that your algorithm, for some reason, is failing to, to picking up things where, which you think it, that, that you think ought to be sort of highly expressed and, and highly significant, then uh, it's important to be able to, uh, th this might allow you to identify such problems. Uh, So uh, another type uh, of plot uh, is to uh, is what's called an MA plot, which we, which we looked at a little bit yesterday, where you instead of plotting the uh, 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 the p-value and the expression uh, and the fold change, you're, you're plotting the mean expression for one of the conditions. It doesn't really matter which one, uh, and the uh, mean fold change, and uh, then we again we're coloring the ones that were significant. Uh, in red and the other ones in black, uh, and here's for the DEC method. And what we're look ideally looking for here is to make sure, uh, make sure that the differentially expressed genes have a relatively high expression level, because uh, one uh, classical problem uh, is that if you have, if you start with a low initial expression level, uh, then it is very easy to obtain a high fold change. And, we, and re, ideally, we want, uh, we want to be sort of require a higher fold change for something to be considered significant uh, if it is um, uh, 
uh, lowly expressed compared to something which is very highly expressed where we're going to require a, a, a smaller fold change to be, uh, to be considered significantly different. So uh, I think what I will let you do is to work through these exercises, which is essentially to uh, generate the different plots here that we show, the MA plots and volcano plots uh, using SCD.